Sheffield United currently sit bottom of the league after conceding 74 goals in 28 games, resulting in only 14 points. They have had recent batterings from Arsenal, Brighton and Aston Villa. Now with this rebuild, I'm going to have five seasons. Can I take Sheffield United from the bottom of the table to potentially European football? It's a big ask, but let's see how we get on. Right, so at the point of taking over Sheffield United, they're not in the best of states at the minute. We've got media prediction of 19th, any free star reputation, so we'll struggle to bring some players in, as should be expected. They are a team that has been very up and down. Prem in the early noughties, then hadn't been up there for a long time until when Chris Wilder first came up, and then they've just got back again after that after they spent two years in the Premier Division. Finances don't look too bad, eight million plus, but we've only got 500K to play with to try and buy some players and bolster this squad out to try and stay up in the first season. Our current wage spend is only 700K, which is probably one of the lowest in the league along with Luton. That's not looking too bad, so we shouldn't have to worry about that. So this is a squad that we've got to play with. If I was to pick a standout player out, it would probably be Gustavo Hamer, who they've just got from Coventry at the end of this season, at the beginning of the season. Along with him, maybe Cameron Archer, just because of his high finishing stat and composure. But obviously, some of his other mentors, like anticipation, it's a bit low, but the pace is quite good as well. Ben Brennan's and Diaz in as well. Hopefully, he can help us. He'll probably play striker or left wing. Where he naturally plays. I think the only way to progress with this team is we are probably gonna have to sell a few players and then buy some better players or maybe younger players to develop if we do go down to come back up and they'll be better by the time we are back. So behind the scenes I'm gonna quickly work the transfer window, see what I can do and try and build the best team I can to possibly stay up. We'll see you at the end of the transfer window in season one. Right so we've come back at the end of the transfer window Currently 12, three points on the board after three games. As we can see, we won 2-0 against Crystal Palace away from home. That's a great result. And then the next two results is a 1-0 loss to Arsenal and a 1-0 loss to Man United, which in this first season, I'm not going to absolutely hate on because that's not terrible results. I know they are losses, but they're not the worst losses in the world. Losing to Rob Rum in the cup isn't the best, but obviously... It's probably better if we go out of the cup early just to focus on the league. So with the transfer, I managed to sell some clauses that uh, Sheffield United already had and lower the bonuses for the season. And I managed to get Wilfred Nonto in. Obviously, Wilfred Nonto is a good young signing. Signed for 18 million and now he's already gone up to 62 to 88 million. He does have a, the two release clauses in his contract. Obviously, if we get relegated, 42 and a half million, still a massive profit. And then... 85 million a minimum release clause if anyone wants to put that in if someone does obviously i use that money to build a better squad overall so i'm not too bothered about that being in there this is a tactic that we're going with just want it to be quite attacking with that uh segundo Falante as well and hopefully be quite defensively strong which actually so far for the team that we are we've only conceded two in three games which isn't too bad. If we pick without restriction our best 11, this is the team that shows. Obviously we wouldn't have him in there because he's injured. So if we do a quick pick instead, he will put Jack Robinson in there instead. So yeah, that's the team that we've got to play with so far. I'm gonna to simulate to the end of the season and hopefully we can stay away from relegation. Right, so we're at the end of season one now and we've actually managed to stay up. We've got the magical 40 point mark. In the first season, that's amazing for Sheffield United. We've finished 11th. Luton are up there with us as well with 46 points, which is amazing by them. The three teams that have gone down is Burnley, which are expected, Forest, and Bournemouth as well on 19 points, which is a bit of a, bit of a surprise uh, considering they've got some decent players there with them. Due to this quite high finish, we've actually got a 43.5 million uh, budget for next season, which will massively help improve the squad. Looking at the squad now, 
our highest top goal scorer was actually our uh, defensive mid, who's probably that Segundo Volante. Uh, Sousa was playing there, and then we've got Cameron Archer with nine, who's playing up top. Average rating is extremely, extremely low, but did the job. We stayed up. My other striker, Rian Brewster, not very high either. The highest average rating in our squad was Gustavo Hamer, who actually played quite well. Seven assists is quite good with one goal. Nonto didn't too, do too bad, got six and seven. Average rating isn't great, but... Looking at the other two competitions, we actually got knocked out by Derby County, so League One, and Rotherham United, who have probably just been relegated, or they've actually stayed up, but in real life, who are bound for relegation already, bottom of the championship. So, not great in the cup competitions, but in the Premier League, we've managed to stay up, and let's just improve the team for next season. So, I'm going to have a quick play around in the transfer market. And then I'll see you at the end of the transfer window set up for season two. So we've come back after the transfer window. And so far we've got four points out of four games, which is quite good. Let's see the fixtures that we've played. Uh, lost one nil away to Wolves. Isn't... It's not the best, not the worst. Um, one nil at home to Crystal Palace. With a late, late, very, very late winner. Uh, we then drew 2-2 away to Newcastle, which is a pretty good... Pretty good result. Won in the Carabao Cup 1-0 with a late winner again. And then lost 3-0 at home to Man City, which is going to happen. The first signing we've made is Morgan Gibbs-White. And we've managed to sign him at a decent price as uh, Notts Forest got relegated. Signed him for 25 million. So far he's played okay. He's got one assist. Probably needs a little bit of time to settle in, but he will, he will get better. Next we signed Sardella, who's a very versatile defender, can play left back, right back and centre back, very capable at all. His main appearances have been coming off the bench and we brought him in for uh, 12.5 million which is a pretty good price. Next we brought in Sedilia as well, who similar name to the last guy, Sedilia, Sardilia. Uh, he's actually scored a goal already, got one goal in his four games that he's played and we got him in for 13 million. Again, it's a pretty good price for a young player that he is. We've also brought in Dominic Solanke, who's in real life is coming off probably the best season he's ever had. Got him in for 25.5 million. Not a bad price. Just because Bournemouth got relegated. And from another relegated team as well, Nicholas Dominguez. Brought him in for 24 million. Even though Forrest only just. Forrest made a decent profit on him, but so far he hasn't played very well. Which I hope changes. Because he has got quite good stats. I know his marking isn't great, but it's passing, tackling, vision, all of that. Mental is very well rounded. Hopefully he can be quite a successful signing. Obviously, a lot of the team has changed, so it'll need a bit of time for them all to integrate in together. We've also got Joshua uh, Vaganoman who's come in. He can play both fullbacks. That's a very good ability. Got him in for seven and a half million. Again, decent price. His average rating is not good at the minute, but obviously we've played, we've not played very well in the first four games. And obviously the last one we brought in is Rooney Bargy, who is one definitely for the future, but he'll probably play every single game at the minute anyway, because we haven't really got anyone else that can play there. He's played four games so far, not played amazing again but hopefully as they gel as they grow together they'll all start playing a little bit better so when we pick the best 11 this is what comes up it's actually got some pretty good names in there i don't mind it just need to be a bit more consistent hopefully just the young players that they are will grow because we have got quite a lot of young players in here i think realistically if we can beat the points total that we got last season it will be a success hopefully we can have a bit of a, a cup run but most likely get knocked out quite early as you can see we've got liverpool in the carabao cup next so we'll probably lose that that's it for now and we'll see you at the end of season two right so we come back at the end of season two and as you can see slight improvement 
we've got 53 points only three points behind um eighth which is the conference league so european football is just within touch we actually finished with a positive goal difference as well which is a major improvement on last year taking a look at the other competitions we actually made it to the fa cup semi-final so it's a wembley trip but we were knocked out to by nottingham forest who if i remember correct correctly yeah they were relegated last season so that is quite disappointing we could have had a final then they lost one nil to chelsea as well so maybe i could have got a win there and potentially got champions league uh, not champions league europa league football so lost on extra time in extra time oh and they scored in the 92nd minute as well to take it to extra time that's disappointing we were knocked out in the third round by liverpool in the carabao cup which I did expect. Looking at the stats for the team for the season, um, Cameron Archer got 22 goals, which is pretty good in 40 games. Two assists, average rating's okay. We still haven't got any green ones yet. Sousa was close with 30 games. Nonto and Morgan's Gibbs White as well, also close. I'm actually very surprised at how many little games Solanke played. Only three goals as well, so maybe uh, i don't know considering he wants to leave it's he could actually leave in the summer which ideally wouldn't want but cameron archer just obviously seems to be playing quite good and he is a team leader now as well and obviously his stats as well are pretty good 17 finishing 16 composure 16 off the ball so it's actually i don't know 19 goals in the premier league as well so you can't really complain looking at the finances obviously the overall balance at the minute is quite quite healthy quite healthy uh, and that has given us 63 and a half million to play with for next season and a little bit of room in the wage budget will probably have to adjust that but um yeah that's definitely enough to improve the team hopefully we can improve it and maybe break into the european spots next season we'll see but gonna go away go into the transfer window spend all that cash and we'll see you at the end of the transfer window at the start of season three right so we'll come back at the start of season three and i think it's fair to say we've had quite a big big transfer window first we'll look at the players that we got out i had to sell ahmed hozik because he only had one year left on his contract and he just wouldn't um speak to me about a new contract so i had to get rid of him 30 million we got for him which is massive profit from what we bought him for also let go of tom davis as well just because he weren't up to the standard and he wasn't really playing got 10 million for him Jaden bogle's gone only 1 million it's just he wasn't anywhere near the standard triore as well has gone for nearly 6 million a bit more money uh, recuperated susa as well who's been playing a lot it's actually gone out on loan but with a mandatory fee I believe it's 24 million altogether and we actually also managed to get 10 million from calvert lewin because he transferred to arsenal for 54 million so the first signing lucas Torreira, very good defensive mid four star is rated very highly immediate description of elite midfielder which is the first elite player i think we've got in the squad his mentals are very very good physicals as well except from pace and strength are a bit low but the others are obviously quite good tackling and marking is very good for the job i want him to do we also brought in marco kenner to obviously give a bit of squad depth for that defensive mid role that is due to obviously the players that left we just didn't have enough defensive mids there got him in for 30 million next in was delot who was on the transfer list obviously we know a lot about delot he's, he's a good player very well-rounded got him in for 30 million again next we've got one banat in on a free it's a good free signing helps up with the with the squad depth also we've got in maxine lacroix who he was the replacement for uh ahmed hozik and yeah obviously we know he's quite pacey good height wins a lot of headers uh, he's got good rounded stats and we got him in for 25 million which is obviously sold uh, Ahmed Hozik for 30 and bought him in for 25, so gained 5 million there. And the last signing is probably the strangest signing I've ever made. We've got Lamin Yamal in. Obviously, Barcelona Wonder Kid. He is probably one of the best Wonder Kids on the game. 
managed to get him in because he wanted to leave Barcelona because he weren't playing enough. And he obviously wanted to just come to the Mighty Blades. His stats already at the age of 18. Obviously, greens all over. He is sensational. Uh, so far in the league, he's played three games and got three goals. So, and his average rating is skyrocketing. He's doing very well. So far in the Premier League, we've actually done quite well. We've got a away win at Newcastle, which is massive. That's a big, big win for a team like us if we want to start pushing for them top eight positions uh one nil lost to chelsea didn't really play very well but it happens uh obviously an easy win at home to carlisle in the cup and then three one away to aston villa as well which is another great great win so far this has us ninth in the league obviously two wins out of three can't really complain with that i have slightly changed the formation for this season i've uh, changed the ball winning midfielder to a halfback just to help this defensive solidity and we've changed the cam to a second striker and put it over towards the right and the striker over towards the left just so it's like a asymmetric 424 like it says up there hopefully this can help penetrate obviously these spaces leave gaps for this runner to go in who's most likely probably gibbs white or another signing we made was uh fagundo torres probably could be him going in there so when we pick best 11 without restriction this is the team that shows crazy the quality we've got in the team now compared to the team that we started with just wanted to have a quick look at the season preview as well which we haven't checked before and it's actually got us in at 11th now which is obviously it shows the improvement we've had to the team hopefully this season we can kick on into these top eight spaces because european football would be nice to get and it obviously brings in a lot more money and hopefully in the cup competitions we can actually i know we got to the semi-final of the fa cup last season but maybe we could get into a final and maybe win a cup anyway that's it for the start of season three really looking forward to this season as the squad at the minute is quite impressive i'm looking forward to see how they grow how they perform especially uh yamal he's done amazingly so far already so yeah i'm gonna sim to the end of the season now and then we'll see you at the end of season three right so we're coming at the end of season three finished seventh massive that is good that is good only four points off the top four as well major improvement again points tally's gone up again we've gone from 40 to 53 now to 67 scoring 70 goals overall in the league as well that is the fourth highest in the league and we've qualified for the uh, conference league as well as it looks like crystal palace and west ham have won some sort of competition to get into the europa league looking at the stats for the players over the season uh Facundo Torres has actually got 16 goals. He's our highest top goal scorer, followed by uh, Yamal, who's got 15 and 10, obviously with a great average rating as well. Uh, Morgan Gibbs White as well probably shared that role with uh, Torres. He's got 13 and 9. And then Rooney Bardi has got 16 assists as well, as along with uh, Vaganoman, who's got 11 assists. Cameron Archer seemed to have dropped off a little bit, only 8 goals. Might have to look at bringing in a new striker. And Dominic Solanke ain't even getting played and his values dropped all the way down to 8 million. So that was an unsuccessful signing and I'll probably look to move him on. In the other cup competitions, again, we got knocked out by Nottingham Forest, who is still in the championship in the FA Cup. Lost on pens again. And then we were knocked out in the Carabao Cup by Arsenal in the fourth round. Going into the next season, we've got... 31.7 million is a decrease but obviously i did spend a lot of money last season so hopefully the only thing i really want to look at improving is the striker because we need more goals from our striker major improvement this season hopefully we can carry it on into season four and maybe let's see how we can do with uh european football as well see if that'll impact our league uh, positions or hopefully it'll just kick us on maybe we could even win it because it is the conference league might be one of the better teams in there and then get into the europa league for season five anyway that's it for this season so we'll see you at the start of season four right so we'll come back at the end of the transfer window for season four big transfer window a lot of players or wouldn't sign new contracts so essentially they wanted to leave when bids were coming in from they were just becoming unhappy so when them bids 
bids did come in i just decided to accept them so we have sold trusty he was a backup center back gone out for 20 million dominic solanke obviously didn't work out got 12 and a half million back obviously lost some money on him but saving on the wages because he was earning quite a bit cameron archer has gone out for quite a big price 40 million it's just after last season he didn't get too many goals didn't play too great so 40 million for him is a good good price to get nonto's gone out on loan because he wanted to play more time and he just didn't really develop at all and then sardili has gone out as well he was getting offers from champions league clubs and he had a, a minimum release clause anyway for 29 million so is just automatically accepted also Sedilia went out as well 20 million to Toulouse a little bit of a profit on him yeah he didn't really grow too well and we had better players at the time so on the ins we had a lot of defenders to replace and we brought in uh, Kevin Danzo big strong center back does the job he's got some European experience as well playing for uh, Lens Callum Doyle young English He's a good ball playing centre back as well. And is quite versatile, can play left back as well. Then brought in Tammy Abraham as a just a backup striker because I believe with his height and his pace he would actually be better than Cameron Archer. And he was a decent price, 16 million. Now my new starting striker, I'm gonna go with Wahe. Wahai. Wahi. I don't know. Eli, Ely, Ely, we call him Ely, uh, brought him in, got good finishing, good composure, good pace, everything for an advance forward that you want, he has got, hopefully he can start well, he hasn't, he hasn't got a goal just yet, but we haven't started great this season, got a new goalkeeper, Atubolu, as well from Leverkusen, and he has only just joined from Freiburg the season before, He's got some very good stats, so I just compared him to the keeper that we had before and he, he looked loads better overall. Luke Thomas is a backup left back to replace Bernat who retired. Van Heck as well, um, Brighton got relegated and he looked like a very good centre back, looks very strong, mentals are very good, Green's all there, tackling obviously very good and not too much of a bad price, it fit, I know 50 million is quite a lot but realistically it's not a terrible price and then we brought in Missouri as well for the uh, backup right back or rotating with uh, Delot and then Serge Gnabry as well cheap price he's only on 26k a week uh, it's just a bit of experience and quality to bring into the side and added bonus he is homegrown so it helps with the registration rules so yeah, we haven't started great so far. Two losses to begin with in the league. Uh, that one at home to Forest is very disappointing considering if we check the stats, we absolutely bombarded on but just couldn't finish. Uh, easily through in the conference league qualifying round. <coughs> Draw at home to Brentford as well and then easily through in the second round of the Carabao Cup. Tactics saying staying the same after how well we did last season. And if we pick without restriction, this is the team that it shows us. Obviously, Fagan Omen's out injured at the minute, but I would like to think this is a strong team. Hopefully, we'll kick on a bit more from how we've been playing. Obviously, uh, Yamal's been playing well, but most of them are in the Conference League games. Yeah, the team looks strong at the minute. Hopefully, we can turn around our poor start and kick on just want another improvement so maybe we can hit the 70 mark hopefully win the conference league and then get into the europa league for next season as well so yeah that's it for the start of season four uh we're gonna simulate to the end now and when we get there we'll check back in right so we'll come back at the end of season four and again we finished seventh it's hard to break into that top six with all these great teams here unfortunately we have got a points decrease but i think that could be due to uh getting further in other competitions obviously more players would have been tired so looking at them competitions 
unfortunately we couldn't win the conference league we lost to atalanta in the semi-final and then they went on to win it against standard liege which i probably would have hoped to win that game yeah unfortunately we just couldn't get past them who did we beat along the way we beat benfica 6-3 on aggregate which is probably a better team and Luzan from Switzerland beat them very convincingly 8-1 looking at the league phase I won 5 and drew 1 and obviously Benfica won all 6 and then I knocked them out FA Cup 4th round by Chelsea can't help it sometimes it's luck of the draw and runner up in the Carabao as well <laughs> nearly got a domestic cup in for Sheffield United who did we lose to Arsenal 2-0 that's a tough one so looking at the stats for everyone this season uh, Yamal had a great season 19 goals for 24 assists amazing average rating uh, Fagundo Torres as well had a great season and also Rooney Bardi so that sort of freeing the attacking midfield uh, position along with Morgan Gibbs White Ely had a great season as well 23 goals hopefully next season get a bit more with a bit more uh, progression so obviously in the final season we'll have the conference league to play for again if we can win that i think for sheffield united considering where they were in season one it will be a massive success the aim for me is to win either a cup competition or break into the top four if either of them are done i would say this is a good rebuild really good rebuild we're going to move on to the transfer window now so we'll see you at the start of season five Right, so we've come back at the start of season five, and we've actually had quite a bit of a um, quiet transfer window, by my standards. So, uh, brought in Harvey Elliott, not a bad price, just on the transfer list, and uh, Onana, not a bad price as well, just for that uh, Segundo Falante role, and then Harvey Elliott as backup. He's very versatile, as you can see, play all over the midfield. Yeah, and then Onana could play centre mid and DM. So yeah, we've spent 70 million in, but we've actually recuperated 101 million with uh, Nonto Torreira going to uh, Al Halil, 60 million. Gnabry wanted out, so had to sell him. So far, it's been a bit rocky. Obviously, it started well with three wins and then got absolutely battered away at the Emirates. Then won again in the second leg for that. Uh, for the conference league and then went to man well had man city at home and unfortunately lost read two and we're also already at the carabao cup lost on pens to coventry which is not good gonna try a little bit something different for the, the last season just to mix it up gone to a 4-2-4 uh support role of the target forward just so he could play to these three around him Deep line playmaker on defence, gone for an inverted full back at left back, on, obviously on defend. And then uh, the wing back on the right back being on attack. So if we pick best 11 without restriction, this is the team that shows. Obviously you've got a couple of injuries out at the minute. Um, Tammy Abraham out for a little bit. And then uh, Rudy Bajri out for r roughly the same time. But this is the team that I'd pick at the minute and hopefully, ideally... I know already at the Carabao Cup. If we could win the Conference League or the FA Cup and finish, well, just get qualified for the Europa League, I think that would be a good point for the last season. It hasn't gone too well, but obviously at this point for Sheffield United, this is a massive success because they are truly in the gutter in real life. So yeah, going to simulate to the end of the season, and let's just see how we get on. Hopefully, uh, we'll get some success, but if not, you know, it was a fun ride. But yeah, we'll see you at the end of Season 5. So we've come back at the end of Season 5, the final season, and uh, I'm very, very, very happy with it. We have actually finished fifth, which is the highest finish we've finished so far. Um, just above Newcastle, one point, only slightly off the top four. But if we look at the league table, we've actually qualified for the Champions League due to uh, the coefficient. So that's 
massive 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 so we know how we've done in the league let's see how we've done in the other competitions and it's a massive success we've won the fa cup we've won the conference league we got knocked out by Coventry in the carabao cup <laughs> not ideal but it's, it's one of them just beat wolves in the fa cup got to the semi-final themselves in real life so they're a good team in the conference league we beat olympic leon 1-0 in the final so we've gone one step further than we did last season had shamrock rovers in the semi-final beat them convincingly 8-4 sorry 8-1 arunka from portugal bruno larg is their manager beat them 9-1 6-0 at their ground and in the fa cup we beat liverpool in the final 4-2 beat arsenal on penalties beat chelsea on penalties so that is a place in the Champions League and two trophies to finish off the rebuild. That is fantastic. If only there was a way I could play more on this save because it's just, just about to get interesting. Looking at the squad for the season, Ely had a great season, 32 and 14 assists with a great average rating. Uh, Yamal, 22 and 21 at the age of 20. Honestly, he's a fantastic player. He's now considered a five-star player. He's been getting uh, player, young player of the year every year. He's fantastic, honestly. Tammy Abraham had a great season. So, obviously, going to the two up front had a quite a big effect on the team. Uh, Torres, again, another great season. Where did he mainly play? He played up front and left wing. He even had a game at target forward. Yeah, major improvement this season. Team's just doing a lot better. It's good to see. So, after making this tremendous progress... Finishing top five to get Champions League and winning our first two trophies. Is this the end of the rebuild? I personally would like to play it more, but it's up to you. If you want me to carry on and do another five years in this rebuild, make sure you like this video. If we hit 20 likes, not a lot, but if we hit 20 likes, I will do another five uh, years with Sheffield United and if you manage to get to the end of the video at this point leave in the comments a team that you want to see me rebuild next that's all for this video and I'll catch you in the next one after the great support of the first video with Sheffield United I've decided to come back and do another five-year rebuild with them, taking it into a total of 10 years. We left them in a great place, leaving them qualified for the Champions League. So let's go back to them now and see if we can take on the rest of world football. Let's see finally how many trophies we can win with Sheffield United. So we are back again with Sheffield United. We hit the light goal, so we're doing another five years. And let's get straight into it season six with the transfers so on the outs we're saying goodbye to a hero a legend we've got gustavo hamer leaving obviously he is the star of the thumbnail in the first video he just wanted to leave wanted to play regular football so i let him go to leicester next out was dominguez he just wasn't happy didn't want to sign a new contract had interest in him got a nice fee of 56 million yeah, it helped fund the transfer window that we had. First in, we got Mateus Cunha. Got him in for 14 and a half million. Good signing. Then we bought our first uh, regen, William. Really good regen goalkeeper. Stats are amazing. Bought in Oliver Skip for a bit of backup at uh, DM. We got Frank Kessie in, who's, uh, you know, he's getting on now, but he's at a stage where he will help us a lot these are the tactics going into the season just want a bit more of attacking football see how it goes try something different just to start the new episode off and if we were picking without restriction this is the best team that we've got which is it looks a strong team but we'll see how it goes so yeah that's the team for this season and let's see how we get on at the end of season six Right, so we've come back at the end of Season 6, and as you can see at the top, we finished 10th. We've but completely fallen off this season. I don't know, don't really know what's happened. I think when I came back halfway through the season, a lot of players were unhappy, and I think that could be the massive uh, 
factor in why we've not done so well. Obviously, Yamal's had a good season again, but it's not as good as he normally is. Uh, Eli's up there as well. And Kunya, my three attackers, all doing well, but the rest of the team, not too great. William uh, did not too bad for a goalkeeper. But yeah, we finished 10th, but let's see how we got on in the rest of the competitions. Can't see how we did in the Champions League because I've obviously skipped too far forward. Yeah, we've managed to win the FA Cup, which is amazing. Lost in the fourth round to Chelsea, and obviously we won the Community Shield, which is good, against Chelsea 2-1. And FA Cup against Chelsea, so we've obviously won, uh, played Chelsea a lot this season. Played them in all three of them competitions twice in the league there's five let's see how we got on in the so we made it to the knockout playoff and we got man city and it's a tough game but yeah lost five four on aggregate that is a little bit disappointing but we've managed to win the fa cup that's got us europa league for next season which is a competition we are yet to win so hopefully we can do well in that the finances ain't looking great at the minute we've only got four million to play with so we're probably gonna have to sell some players if we want to bring some players in the debt isn't looking too bad though we've only got 15 million transfer debt so we just need to actually start making money maybe that could start with winning the europa league next season but yeah that's how we did for season six quite disappointing hopefully next season we can do a little bit better be a bit stronger Obviously, all the younger players would have grown an extra year, so going to play around in the transfer window now, and then we'll see you at the start of Season 7. So we're back at the end of Season 7's transfer window. On the outs, Kevin Danzo's gone out. He just wasn't really up to standard, really. Next was Marco Canna. He didn't really want to sign a contract, so had to get rid of him just to make some money. Luke Thomas was nowhere near the standard. Rooney bargi has gone out for more game time because we're not really playing with wingers at the minute. And Noah, our goalkeeper, has gone out for 50 million. Nice little profit on him. On the ins, we've got Andy Robertson come in. Uh, obviously, his stats are still great, but he is 35. But hopefully, he can still play up to a good standard. We've got Hincapi in to really strengthen up that defence because I think that was one of our weaker spots. We've got another Brazilian uh, regen, Ail, come in. He's got some very good mentals. He looks great. And we've also got uh, Lima as well, who's another uh, regen goalkeeper from Brazil. Wonder Kid looks great. If he wants to leave, then we, hopefully we can just sell him on for a big, big profit. So far, it's been a bit ropey. Lost on pens in the Community Shield. Um, lost 5-2 away to Tottenham. Not good. Beat Villa 2-0, which is better. And then, obviously, losing our next two games out in the Carabao Cup already. Um, so, obviously, lost to Tottenham twice already. Played Tottenham and Liverpool twice. Lost to Liverpool 1-0 at Anfield as well, but... Looking at our uh, Europa League group phase, obviously we've got a couple of hard teams in there with Milan, Dortmund and Rangers, but the rest we should comfortably get through. So hopefully we won't have to play the knockout round. Hopefully we can actually win that and that will allow us to automatically qualify for the Champions League. This is tactic we're setting up with, very similar to last year, just going more attacking. And if we pick our best 11, this is what it shows, Ale straight, uh, drop straight in there. So does Hinkapi. Uh, the next area we really need to improve is the wingbacks, I think. Uh, but we have got a lot of players that don't really want to sign a new contract as well. So I might have to look to move in them on like Van Heck and um, LaCroix as well. That's it for Season 7's uh, transfer window. And we're going to catch you at the end of the season. And hopefully we've at least won a trophy. And I really want to do qualify for the Champions League again. So yeah, we'll see you at the end of Season 7. Right, so we're back again at the end of Season 7. And as you can see, we finished 6th in the Premier League. It says that at the top. Massive improvement from last year. Four spots up. So the best players for the season. Yamal's up there again. Mateus Cunha's had a great season as well. Just a shame he's unhappy uh eli's had a good season as well la's played really well coming in everyone pretty much all around had a good good average rating they all played quite well taking a look at the league as you can see we have actually qualified for the champions league so that probably means we've won something european arsenal stormed away with the league 94 points no one really anywhere near them uh i gained a few points from last season still quite a lot of losses but definitely better in the goal difference as you can see recent 
game winning 8 1 against Everton. So now looking at all competitions, we did win the uh, Europa League, which is something I wanted to do. It's a trophy we haven't uh, played in yet, and we've won it first time of asking. We beat uh, Real Sociedad 2 1 in the final. Semi final, we played Florentina and just got through them. Quarter final, we played AC Milan and absolutely swept them 4-0 round of 16 we had Girona and beat them quite comfortably as well FA Cup we weren't managed to retain it we lost to Arsenal didn't actually go on to win it it was Man United who won it but we didn't get to retain it this year knocked out in the third round of the Carabao Cup again but yeah that means obviously we're gonna play Champions League football next season which is good we really need to get some money in because the finances are looking quite poor it's just we need better income and I guess that's from the prize that would be from the prize from Champions League because obviously we've won the Europa League and we actually got 20 million less than we got in the Champions League where we only got knocked out in the playoff round. So, But obviously that leaves us with a very small transfer budget again. Not surprised. Hopefully the team doesn't need too much playing about with but we'll see how it goes. That's it for the end of Season 7. So obviously we'll come back at the start of Season 8 after the transfer window. So we'll see you then. Right, so we're back at the start of Season 8. Just looking at the results so far, it's been very good. Uh, we've won every single game. Won this uh, Euro and South America Club Challenge 4-0. Beat Newcastle at St. James's Park. Beat Liverpool in the Super Cup on extra time. Beat Leicester 3-1 in the league. They did quite well last season. Beat Chelsea away from home 3-2. Late minute winner by Tammy Abraham back at his old place. And beat Southampton 3-2 as well. So we are conceding a lot of goals, but we're scoring a lot as well. So it's doing quite well. If we look at our Champions League uh, phase group as well, we have got a really difficult draw. So we've got Atletico Madrid, Bayern Munich, Porto, Rims, Nice, Real Madrid, <sighs> Bayern Leverkusen and Newcastle as well. Again, we've got another hard draw in the Carabao Cup. It just doesn't seem to want us to, uh, to go any further in that. Now looking at the transfers on the outs, Mateus Cunha has gone. He didn't really want to be around. I'm not surprised he's had a pay rise of 800k a week, but yeah, he didn't want to be here. Uh, I just thought I'd get rid of him. Morgan's Gibbs White has gone out as well for a decent price, nearly 50 million. Uh, he just sort of didn't play much. Obviously, we don't play a cam anymore with this new tactic, so looking more at bringing wingers in on the ends we brought this young regen in just sent him back out on loan Ibrahim Kanate was on a transfer list and I thought he'd be a good player to get in to strengthen up the the back line Jeremy uh, McAllister another regen I thought at left back he had a release clause of 27 million so I thought I'd bring him in and he he played quite well so far and the last one Mudrick. We have brought in Mudrick. Um, it could be a bit of a surprise, but to be honest, his stats are pretty good. Um, he has done actually really well so far. Got two goals. He's got an average rating of 7.45 in four games in the league. So I think he'll be. He would play very well for us, and as he has so far. So we have reverted back to the 4-2-4. Got rid of the cam. Uh, obviously it has worked quite well for us so far and if we pick best 11 without restriction this is a team that comes up and it's a very strong team now with all the younger players growing Bargy's come back in now we're using wingers Yamal's actually gone up front William probably one of the best goalkeepers in the world now stats have really really improved massively as you see he's had a lot of ones go up in a lot of areas it, it, obviously he was really good before I even got him but yeah, he just looks sensational. But yeah, that's it for season eight. Uh, we're gonna simulate to the end of the season now. Hopefully we can do a lot better in the league as we've started off with four wins. It's a positive sign. If we can finish in a top three, maybe then we could push for a league title in the last two seasons. So we'll see you at the end of season eight. So we are back at the end of season eight and massive 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 improvement this year we've finished second got 90 points as well only three off the title which is mega mega improvement really good goal difference as well 56 obviously arsenal are just flying they've got an absolutely insane squad obviously saliba is going to be great up on the davies Jao Neves, Declan Rice, 
And now checking out the other competitions. We've done the domestic double, we've won the FA Cup and the Carabao. So Carabao's another uh, trophy ticked off, one that we've won now. Won the Super Cup as well, which is good. We played Liverpool in the final, beat them in extra time. Got knocked out in the semi-final of the Champions League, which is pretty good for a second year in the Champions League. Just weren't too much of a bad loss to Barcelona. Barcelona went on to win it as well. Looking at the player stats, uh, Yamal had a great season. 42 goals and 18 assists is incredible. And as we can actually see, he actually won the World Player of the Year. Checking out the milestones, yeah, he won World Football of the Year and World Player of the Year at Sheffield United. Massive, massive. Yeah, obviously he's amazing. He's done so good. Finances again, obviously, <laughs> although we got quite far in the Champions League, did not go up at all. Player wages being a main problem. Obviously, transfer expenditure as well. Maybe we might need to not look at signing anyone this season. Loan repayments and interest as well. That's quite a lot for this season. 27 million, so that's probably not helping us at all. But yeah, that's it for season eight. Really impressive, really strong season. Won actually four trophies if you include the pre-season ones, including the Super Cup and the South American Challenge one. And we won both the domestic cups as well. Hopefully soon, as we can see there, 90 points. Hopefully next season take that another level above. Somehow we've got to break Arsenal down because they are just very, very good at the minute. And maybe we get a bit further in the Champions League as well. Maybe make a final or win it. So yeah, that's it for Season 8. And we'll see you at the start of Season 9. Right, so we're back at the start of Season 9 now. It's been a long journey. We've had a good start again. Battered everyone in the friendlies. Beat Arsenal in the Community Shield on penalties. Three pretty good wins. 3-0, 3-1, 1-0 against Brentford. And then massive win, hopefully for the, for, massive for the title towards the end of the season. 3-2 against Arsenal. So looking at the transfers that we uh, made, obviously, as we know, we didn't have a lot of money, but we were able to make some sales just due to people, again, not wanting to be at Sheffield United for some reason. Um, so first we've got Aeol, who obviously is a better, one of the better players, but for the formation that we are using, due to it being so successful, uh, he couldn't really fit into the team. So he was let go. RB Leipzig, 20 million, and a 50% salon clause as well, just in case. Next, Frank Kessie left, uh, 34 years old, obviously deteriorating a little bit. His stats are in the, especially the physicals going down a lot. Um, he had offers from Saudi, and obviously he wanted to go because of the money. And yeah, it was time to freshen up that midfield a little bit anyway, maybe. Another one we let out was uh, another young sub. We got him in last season, loaned him out. And then I was sort of looked at him, didn't think, just because of the height, maybe didn't think too much of him. And then let him go. Um, made a little bit of a profit on him, helped us with our transfer window. Uh, Maxine Lacroix, another player who wanted to leave. If that's what he wants to do, that's what he wants to do. He served us well, but obviously he was getting a little bit older and he was going to run down his contract, so cashing him on him while we could. And the last one, a little bit sad about, because obviously he's been in the squad for a while, he's a very good player as well, um, Onana. He didn't want to stick around, unfortunately, so had to let him go. Real Madrid came in, obviously he's going to want to go. He was going to run down his contract, so... Got 55 million for him. So our first player in was so our first player in was uh, this regen Brazilian from from Brazil. <laughs> nice and tall, six foot six, decent pace, jump and reach obviously good. Composure is very good. Leadership off the ball, mentals are very good. A little bit disappointed with the passing, but 17 finishing, and he only cost us. 14 million, which is an absolute bargain. Next in from the same club, Santos, we got a. Brazilian regen, uh, just paid for his release clause again. He's uh, a defensive mid, obviously, to help uh, bolster the squad there, as we lost a few players there. His mentors are very good. Uh, physicals are obviously very good. Again, not very good at jumping at 5'6", but that's fine. And hopefully he'll grow a little bit, but he's a, he's a good name. He's a good player as a backup. Next again, another CDM, obviously, because <laughs> we literally lost basically our whole uh, CDM line. Got Seawold, got him from Bayern Munich. He was on the transfer list. 
obviously in his biography it says he's truly one of the world's global global stars so that's good he's an elite midfielder 30 years old mentals are very well-rounded physicals are very well-rounded he's just really well-rounded all around we got him in for 52 million not too bad but hopefully he will play well for us which he has so far and last in couldn't couldn't turn it down he was on the transfer list enzo fernandez he is obviously one of the better midfielders in the game he's four and a half star reputation he's four and a half star ability as well according to my uh coach obviously technicals in all the right areas are very good and obviously can tackle as well as playing forward vision is excellent off the ball is excellent composure is excellent and then his physicals as well are also very good the tactics are staying the same obviously it worked quite well last season hopefully just with this bit of added quality we've got and it can take another step forward and if we pick our best without restriction this is the team that shows up obviously mudrick is injured at the minute i think he's out for another two to four months so instead it will probably be uh lamar that goes there and then vinicius goes up front which is quite good yeah i'm really happy with the team hopefully like i said this season just go one step further yeah i'm really happy with the team hopefully like i said we just go one step further like i said i'm really happy with the team at the minute started very well five wins out of five in the games that count um hopefully this season we could just take it one step further i know we had 90 points last season and didn't win the league hopefully arsenal can drop off just a little bit or we can just slightly improve and then champions league as well we made the semi-final last year so hopefully within these last two seasons we can win the premier league and the champions league and then we have won everything that is of been available to us as sheffield united so yeah that's it for the start of season nine and the transfer window and we'll see you at the end of the season so we've come back at the start of season nine and we've finally won the league we've uh, improved by one point we've got 91 this season arsenal dropped off by 10 points which is obviously going to help a lot uh, scored 120 goals, only five losses, all the way from home except from one. Massive, but finally we've won the league. Checking out the other competitions, we also won the FA Cup, so that's a, a good double. Got knocked out in the semi-final by Arsenal, beat Arsenal in the FA Cup final as well. Beat Arsenal in the league to second, and Champions League, It's I've gone too far, so we'll see. And we've also won the Champions League! Bam. We beat Inter Milan in the final 3-2 And we also beat Arsenal in the semi-final So we played Arsenal in all four competitions They managed to knock us out of one But we beat them to the other three I guess we are now the third English team to complete the treble Premier League, Champions League, FA Cup Massive season Finished it and we've still got one more season to go So we'll see how that goes We have now actually won everything available to us we the only thing we've got left is the club world championship which will be in now so checking out the squad for the season yamal again massive average rating is 7.62 is really high 43 goals and 28 assists vinicius who we bought in for uh, 14 million 30 goals and 15 assists 7.3 being our second best player in the team that is massive. Eli's had a great season as well. 37 goals, 11 assists. Rooney Bargy with 18 and 15 in quite a limited game time as well. Even after that great season, the finances are still looking a bit rubbish. A bit better than they were before. But yeah, at least we're still passing everything. As you can see, we have made 100 million this season, so uh, this month. So that has helped out a lot. Hopefully, we won't break any financial rules but yeah that's it for season nine obviously fantastic season hopefully we could build on it for season 10 and just pff, hopefully win the premier league and the champions league again and we'll see you at the start of season 10 so we're back at the beginning of season 10 we've had a really quiet transfer window we've actually spent zero pounds <gasps> uh, brought in curtis jones and tomori in on a free from last season and we've let go of Tammy Abraham and Canate. Had some interesting games so far. <laughs> Just want to look at a friendly beat PSG 9-3, which is pretty crazy. 
uh, won the Community Shield on pens, a couple of wins in the Premier League, and then obviously a big 5-1 loss away to Brighton after beating them 4-1 in the Super Cup, and we've advanced as well in the Carabao Cup. Taking a look at our Champions League phase, we have got some quite hard games, but luckily the more tougher games are actually at home. Hopefully we can retain the Champions League after winning it last year. Tactics are going to stay the exact same. This is the best 11 if we pick uh, without restriction, which actually puts Jamal at right wing, which hopefully doesn't play because he actually plays very well as a striker. But yeah, that's it for the start of season 10. It is the last season. We have currently won everything, so haven't really got any expectations for this season. Hopefully we, we can retain either the Champions League or the Premier League. But yeah, we'll see you at the end of season 10 and at the end of the rebuild. So we are back at the end of season 10 and we have gone back to back in the Premier League. We've won the Premier League again, dropped off a little bit in points, but so did Arsenal. Won it two times in a row now, which is massive, massive, massive for the club. And in the other competitions as well, we can see we have won the Champions League as well, the Carabao Cup, Super Cup, Community Shield, but not the FA Cup. Missed out on winning it all on the FA Cup. Lost in the fifth round to Aston Villa. And then Brentford went on to win it against Liverpool. Missing out on the FA Cup is slightly disappointing. But obviously, we've done amazingly in the other competitions. Won the Premier League again. Won the Champions League. Beat Inter in the semi-final, who we beat in the final last year. Beat Bayern Munich in the quarters. And then have Florentina in the round of 16. In the league phase, we did really well. Got seven wins out of eight. Only losing one to Inter Milan as well. Yeah, absolutely smashed it. As you can see, we've still got the Club World Championship to play. So I'm actually going to simulate a little bit further. I just wanted to capture all this. And then we'll come back after the Club World Championship. And if we then do win that, we have won everything possible. Everything available to us. But it's the first time and the last time entering it. So let's see how we get on. So we have come back after the Club World Championship and we have actually won it against Tottenham, which is a surprise to see them there. Graham Potter is the manager as well. Beat PSG 1-0 in the semis. Beat Real Madrid 5-2. Beat Al Nasser 5-1. And then in our groups, we scored 14 goals as well, winning all three games. We have actually lost quite a few of our players. So this is the squad we've got left, quite a small squad. But if we just pick out a few players, Yamal last season got 30 goals and 21 assists. Eli got 37 goals and 11 assists, very good return. And Vinicius got 35 goals and 9 assists, so very good return from them three. If we look at the club vision, we are actually now the most reputable team in the world. And we are the biggest club in the world as well. And quite rightfully, I've gone down as a legend at the club along with Yamal and Vinicius going down as icons so yeah that's the end of the Sheffield United rebuild uh, we actually spanned over 10 years we managed to win absolutely everything available to us taking a look at the leaderboard this allowed Sheffield United to go top winning 12 major trophies across the 10 seasons obviously they did have more seasons than my Chelsea re rebuild but they still win more so they are at top of the league yeah it was a great re rebuild had a lot of good players thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed if you did leave a like and subscribe if you want to catch out more uh, football manager rebuilds and that is it for this video and we'll see you in the next one